Uh, the bill was consolidating all the stakeholders. We brought on board the various actors in the, in the value chain of livestock. Uh, here in the workshop, as you can see, we had uh, Kenya Market Trust who are helping us in the facilitating the workshop. ILRI, the International Research Institute for Livestock. Uh, we also have uh, the State Department for Livestock who are very much thankful to the government of Kenya and to the actors who have really supported us on this particular uh, program. I'm sure by the end of the day, uh, Garissa County and Asal counties will be more happier than any other county because when you talk of livestock, yeah, okay, okay, when you talk of livestock, you are typically talking about the Asal counties because 90% of our lives and livelihood depend directly or indirectly on livestock production. We therefore thank very, very much to the organizers and the county government of Garissa, the leadership of the county government, the national government, and all the actors. It will be of help to Garissa County, specifically, and to Asal counties. Uh, there are three, actually the various bills which the government of Kenya has developed is consolidated into three bills now. We, had, uh, we have the animal health bill, uh, the veterinary bill, and the livestock bill. All these bills now consolidate all the efforts which were appearing on the various acts and various bills to make into a comprehensive uh, bill that will be helping uh, the, the pastoral owners. For example, these bills are coming at the right time. There were serious coordination issues between the national government and the county government on how to manage resources at grassroots level because there was no bill to, reg to regulate all these things. Once this bill is, pa is passed by the, by the actors and they have validated it, uh, Asal counties and specifically Garza County will be, will be having a lot of opportunity. For example, we have issues related to markets. All these issues related to markets will be, will be sorted out. We have issues related to livestock movement, uh, transpassing a lot of diseases and a lot of problems. This will be, will be, will be sorted out in the bill. We have integrated value chains, for example, in the bill, which will cut across. One of the biggest challenges we have as Asal counties now is to how to create a, a, you know, a bulkage for, for hay, bulkage for, for the production. Now this bill will bring together farmers, agro-farmers, and uh, also give advocacy to the livestock owners to ensure that uh, at least an aspect of fodder production will be inculcated into the bill. That will definitely reduce and mitigate the risk of, uh, the risk, the risk of uh, movement, uh, migration factor, and also it will increase feed, feed portfolio for the livestock. Additionally, the aspect of livestock insurance is very important, and uh, this will now cascade it, ca cascade it down to the, to the, to the grassroots level. Index-based livestock insurance is very important component, but our people have not adapted it still. But if there will be a bill to, uh, to regulate that one, mm -hmm. uh, farmers will be able to enroll themselves into financial institutions, they will be able to enroll themselves into these services, and a bit of uh, mitigating, uh, mitigating uh, uh, the risk and hazards faced by them will be reduced. So that's the importance of this bill. We have converged here so that we could make our inputs into three bills that are with the parliament. The livestock bill, animal health bill, and public veterinary public health bill. So we're going to make our inputs. We will remove what we think is not favoring us, and we can make additions to, of what we think is best for the pastoralists. That's why we're here today. It's to address climate change. So we were looking for issues like climate change, which is really uh, an issue in our northern Kenya. And in the animal health bill, we're looking at how we can uh, bring on board the private sector, because the government alone cannot do much. It is a very expensive exercise. Uh, our animals are very many. And what we think is the best approach is to have the private sector taking the bulk of the work so that we are able to, to have healthy animals which we can market within and out of the country. And uh, in the public health bill, we want to see uh, the animal products, the meat, uh, the best way of governing. Maybe how best our slaughterhouses can function, 
how best we can have healthy meat for consumption by our people. These are the key issues. Uh, if I go back to the animal health bill, we have instances where pastors are not willing to treat the animals. So we want to see how we can uh, make it mandatory for the pastors to treat the animals. Because if they don't, we don't do that, then they're going to infect other animals. This is a major problem. Farmers are really keeping livestock as a commercial uh, activity where they can reap in money, where they, you know, we can grow our economy as a country and as a county. So these are the key issues. Currently what they do is animals or livestock is kept on a traditional way and uh, we don't drive the best value from our animals. So we want to see we get the best value out of the animals we keep. We have uh, our pastoralists that wait for the government to treat the animals or vaccinate the animals. And, and they still want to drive the best uh, from them. So why, why I say they are li like they don't own? is because they don't do it commercially. They don't see it as wealth. Animals are wealth. The more you have healthy animals, the more wealth you will have. So we want to see a situation where our farmers are thinking of the end market. They can improve their breed, they can improve the, 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 I mean the grazing, and they can improve the animal health, uh, anim the health of the animals. So they at least need to take, think of the end market, how best they can sell their products to the market, whether it is within the country or outside the country. So this is why I say they are poor millionaires. Is because you will find a pastoralist who has over 200 cattle or camel, 600 uh, herds of shots, that is a gotten sheep, but he's still very poor. And if you convert that into Kenya shillings, you'll find he has millions with him. But this same guy is still asking for support from the government or relief from you know other agencies. So we want to change the mindset such that these pastoralists can see his animals and he can see the wealth he has, actually. So currently, I will say we, our pastoralists are like four millionaires, but we need to change the mindset and we convert them into a rich millionaires. Uh, we have come to Garissa today for the purpose of undertaking a stakeholder consultation towards uh, uh, development of uh, uh, the currently uh, reviewed and uh, uh, and uh, uh, consolidated bills that relates to animal health, veterinary public health, and livestock bills. Uh, these bills are being reviewed and also being consolidated for some of them uh, for purposes of uh, uh, having single bills, uh, which, when enacted, will uh, create single document, an act of parliament, which can inform the necessary regulation measures that are required for purposes of uh, regulating uh, activities within the uh, livestock sector. Because you realize uh, uh, since the last uh, uh, or the existing uh, 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 legislations were, were developed, there has been a lot of changes. Uh, within the government governing system in the in the country, especially following the devolution and the enactment of Constitution of Kenya 2010, uh, there has been certain uh, administrative adjustments which required that the existing laws must be tailored to be consistent with the constitutional dispensations and functions as provided for by Schedule 4 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. And uh, this is now what we have come. Uh, to Garissa to be able to engage them on the draft uh, bills uh, which have been consultatively developed uh, with the various counties uh, so that the Garissa, uh, Wajia and Mandera county stakeholders can have the opportunity of assessing and seeing uh, to it that the bills which are currently being produced are able to support them to regulate the industry and also provide for adequate measures which will be able to enhance delivery of veterinary services within those counties. Uh, we have 10 clusters 
which has been uh, planned and uh, we started to do that in the last week of uh, September and uh, this is the second week where we are now here to be able to engage those three counties. Okay, the pertinent issues that uh, is of concern, especially in an area like this, is the aspect of disease management. Livestock diseases are critical to livelihood uh, within uh, an area, a pastoral area of, uh, of uh, the nature of places like uh, Garissa, uh, Wajia, and even Mandera. Because with the disease, livestock cannot thrive, and even when they are processed, when the products are processed, even when the live animals are processed for purposes of trade, they cannot really access markets because diseases limit their movement. And the, any country that has realization that Kenya is infected because of some of these diseases we're having, like the trade sensitive animal diseases, then they'll object to accepting access of our livestock and livestock products in their countries. So in order to be able to enhance disease control measures, the bills are being re reviewed so that they adequately provide for measures that relates to the prevention of uh, the disease, the actual control, and in the process eradication of the diseases. And also, it also has uh, aspects that uh, are going to touch on uh, control of livestock movement. Because you, in an area, a pastoral area like uh, the Assals, you find livestock are moving left and right. And this is necessitated basically because of a shortage of forage and they have to go far distances from their areas of domicile to look for grazing areas. And this, in the process, has contributed to spread of disease. And it is in this respect that as we engage these bills, we expect them to provide us with the best measures that can be able to mitigate on such kind of practices which are common in these places. Even at times the few that have been recruited have not really been done with the due diligence, taking in uh, consideration aspects of qualification, even experience in terms of uh, practice that would be adequate enough to be able to put an officer in charge. Because we have many areas that we have observed where you find uh, recently graduating students have been put to be directors in counties. Mm -hmm. Uh, despite the fact that there are many qualified people who have been in counties and they have a lot of experience in uh, disease, animal disease management that could probably be having adequate capacity to coordinate and therefore direct all veterinary services within the counties. So the bill will take care of uh, the necessary qualifications that are required for such kind of scenarios. And also we have cases where you find uh, there's inadequacy of funding, within counties, lack of facilities, and even uh, programs to be able to put in place uh, adequate evaluation uh, processes that can inform the county administration on the effectiveness of the veterinary services which are putting in place. Gene and uh, disease within the slaughtering and processing facilities and also will inform aspects of marketing of livestock and livestock products. And warmongers, uh, leaders who are now becoming like, uh, what do I call them in English? In Swahili they are called uh, Mababe Zavita. And uh, in English I think we can call them warmongers. So we don't want more warmongers in this country. We want to live peacefully together. And uh, it is our prayers that there will be rain to, to help the pastoralists not to move to other areas. So thank you very much. Uh, it is